The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. And welcome to Sonic Society, episode 455. I'm your host, Jack Ward, and this big, strong dose of ear candy beside me is, of course... The cat? <laughs> no. Oh, no, it's me. That's right. It's me, David Ott. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Jack. How are you doing? I'm doing well. The cat is eye candy. You're the ear candy. For oh, some... <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, cats don't tend to be ear candy, really. No. As, especially when they're outside and there's another cat that's a rival. That's definitely not ear can. Anyway, um, we digress. How's your week? Very, very good, actually. We've, we've just spent the weekend in the Lake District. In and, the Lake District. Uh, had a lovely time. Snow up to my knees, which is the first time I've ever seen snow above my ankles. Wow. Not to have seen snow that deep before is a bit strange for all of you over there. Because <laughs> uh, I remember when I came around... Um, North America now getting on six years ago. Uh, I was seen. I was shown pictures of snow drifts of ten foot and above. Right. Uh, so yes, up to my knees isn't actually that much, but for the UK, it yeah. is a lot. Oh, for sure. We're yeah. about to get a drop of uh, forty centimeters here, which is. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, so it's by... about a foot and a half. Yeah, kind of, it's, it's uh, getting it's, there, getting it's onto. Getting closer to two feet at that point i think so i mean <laughs> it's it's gonna be a big drop on the weekend we've had a, you know about half of that already and and we're going to get some more so yeah, i'm very that, excited that, that just goes uh, and not wishing to make any puns but it just goes completely over my head <laughs> <laughs> there you go, exactly. because we just we just don't have that kind of snow here no as i say that up, up above my ankles is rare mm -hmm. so to my knees was just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's feature is a new series from Steam Boys Radio Show, beginning with episode one, Meeting the Team by James Lewing. But before that, let's have a little bit of Sonic news, okay? Ooh, ooh, yes. We have a brand new Zoom R24 that is playing double duty as both our in-house mixer and will also get out and about as we work towards doing some live shows, hopefully in the summer. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm recording on this right now. You know, Richard Summers and I spent four hours on Sunday getting it working with the studio computer. <laughs> four hours on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. And then Stephen J. Cohen spent about an hour and a half with me yesterday going over some elements of Reaper. And he spent an undisclosed amount of time a week ago helping us out. <laughs> Out as well and then i've been fiddling with it for about two weeks along with getting the other stuff to it's been about three weeks trying to get everything set but it feels good now well, exactly you don't get to that level of feeling good without some without some work exactly. so you you can actually show that three weeks of work yeah and all of that intensive effort it's been a huge team effort and and, mm -hmm. and the upshot is digitrack is dead long live the zoomer so <laughs> it's, it'll be a lot of fun. There's lots of neat stuff that we can do with that. So I'm really excited to bring some actors in and do some more Biff Straker stuff, which is good. Yeah, so uh, we are now setting up a Kickstarter to get me over <laughs> to the studio. So That's right. <laughs> For a live Biff Straker performance <laughs> in my room. <laughs> yep. So that'll be great. No. Don't worry, everyone. If you're sick of people putting out Kickstarters, we're not going to do that. No, we're not doing a Kickstarter right now. But there are a lot of people who are on Patreon, a lot of people doing Kickstarters oh, yes. right yep. now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Biff Straker, we're uh, in the, the case of the lost episode six. This is not to make Richard Summers feel badly because he's been helping us a lot. But he's working diligently on episode six now. So those people who are desperate to hear Biff Straker... Don't don't worry, it's not dead. We've got six and seven that are recorded and ready to go. It's just a little bit of editing that has to go. And, and then, of course, we have all the way the rest of 15. And, and, and don't worry, Jack. I, I've, I'm, I've been waiting th three years or more for my episode six over at uh, Darker Projects. So uh, <laughs> there are some things that do get 
well, for, for which real life does get in the way. Of course. And it was six and... years when you recorded your lines for Biff Straker, too. So, oh, yes, of course, Because yes. <laughs> you did that live. I was listening to the old yes. ones. Because we had to re-record some of the actors for various reasons. And we were able to keep yours for the most part. I don't think you redid a lot of your lines, did you? I don't think so, no. Yeah, no. so that's great. Well, we'll have to have you do more now that we've got something to <laughs> <Yes>. record on. <laughs> Philippa Graves uh, is what we're, I'm doing for Nad's Rim. So, Nad's Ads room preparation uh, has started, and uh, I, I'm thinking of building a Lotus Notes database because I love Lotus Notes. Casebook Detective <laughs> database file so I can keep all this stuff because I'm going to show David, who's here uh, on video, mm -hmm. one yeah. of the great books Ooh. I got. Yeah, it's Forensics called... Forensics Demystified. That's mm -hmm. right. A self-teaching guide. So I get to read all that. I've got so many good stuff for Philippa. I've got, you know, books on private eyes and all writer's guide stuff. And this one, these all came from a secondhand bookstore that I found too, which is really mm -hmm. quite cool. Mm -hmm. Heroes and heroines. Yep. 16 master archetypes. So things like mm. the charmer, the bad boy, the chief, yep. the best mm -hmm. friend, the boss, the free spirit, the waif, the seductress, the crusader, all of those, uh, what their archetypes are and how they interact with other archetypes. Mm. So it just sort of give you some ideas, you know, and mm -hmm. that'll be quite mm -hmm. cool. So uh, there's some really cool stuff. I've got some really neat character things that I've been building in these stories and of course Ooh. the plots are coming together and i can't wait i'm just like, so excited for february 1st because i just want to just hit the ground running <laughs> and uh move along are you going to write anything for nadstrom do you think uh well i haven't actually thought so far but it's one of those things that will just sort of percolate and and i might be inspired we have 13 days uh, so i'm not i'm not going to say absolutely not 13 days for um, you to figure that out for anybody else who's listening yeah yeah contact us an audio drama uh, radio drama lovers or the sonic society facebook group and uh sonic society gmail.com we haven't got a lot of email lately so it's feeling a little neglected mm -hmm. so sent us something there oh it's 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 like zug Bude and huey all over again isn't it, it is it is i'm glad you remember them god bless you for that <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, one of the things I'm working on, and I got to send out another email to my developer, is Rye Tracker. I promised we'd talk a little bit about that. Did I mm. mention what Rye Tracker is specifically? Well, I, I know a bit of what Rye Tracker is, but uh, mm -hmm. for the listeners at home, Rye Tracker is a Java software that uh, works obviously with any of the operating system that you have. I think it's uh, three projects in the shareware version or the, fair, uh, the shareware version. And of those projects, you, def you can define how many pages or how many words you want to hit as your goal. And Rye Tracker will break down based upon your choices of weekly, daily, or, or monthly goals so that you can hit your goals of your writing. So whether you're writing a novel or a script or an audio drama for an ASRIM or whatever it is, Rye Tracker will help keep track of those things. And it's got some interesting little features. So, for example, if uh, you turn it on, you can set it to your Twitter so that if you miss a deadline, it will automatically post that you missed your deadline to your friends so they can needle you a little bit, keep you honest. And if you make your deadline, it'll automatically tell you when you do that. So you, it's great for those milestones that you need to be able to, because as writers, we need just a little bit of push to make sure that we get these things done and caught up. Here's a question for you then, Jack. You could alter it slightly for those of us who uh, record audiobooks. Mm. And you could actually have it and, and, you know, this book is 500 pages long and I want to get it recorded by such and such a date. And it basically does a similar thing. I want to do this many pages a week or this many pages a day. That's a really good idea. This is now, now we're already um, moving the scope of this. <laughs> this Rytracker <laughs> 2.0. Yeah, I'd have to think about yes. that. That's a really cool idea. I like that. I know that I've set it up currently so that if you turn it on down below in the bottom right hand corner in the little system tray, um, whatever, once you start turning it on, whatever words you're writing, it's tracking in the background. Oh, wow. So you could be using it. I want to make sure it was sort of omnivorous. So mm -hmm. you could use it for Celtics. You could use it for uh, Word documents. You mm -hmm. could use it for what, Facebook whatever status software. updates. 
Yeah, anything that you're writing in, uh, in Facebook, <laughs> Twitter novels, there you go. <laughs> Whatever you're writing, it will remember the words and total those up as or, or page numbers mm. based upon the average number of words in a page based upon. That's so a good idea. Really cool thing that uh, we're coming up with, and uh, we're going to give the free version away to anybody who wants to sign up for Natrim this year, mm -hmm. uh, and then the final version will give away free to people at the end of Natrim if you complete it. Hooray! We're even give, so we're giving away versions of amazing software, and we're giving away an extra day this year for Natrim. Oh, I know yeah. I keep on saying it every week. That's right. But I think we've we've just got to make sure that people know how generous we're being. Absolutely. That's great. We want you to hit your Nadrim goals. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, <laughs> what else do we have going on? We've got, uh, well, I just downloaded Witch Hunter, the audio book. Yes, I, I've got that as well. It's it's sitting in my things to listen. That's right. Uh, it's it's right there in my things to listen as well. Um, I have started work on Biff Straker, the role-playing game. So if you ooh. like role-playing dice games, I, I came up with an idea of setting up a system that... Uh, is sort of universal where I would give it away for free, the system. So anyone who wants to use the actual system for any kind of role playing game, it'll be there. But That's we'll really try to put together like some source books so if people want to play in the universe of Biff Straker. Oh, wonderful. Can. Yeah, so lots of fun. CRT, that's Colonial Radio Theater, has started work on Kentucky, another Revolutionary War story. They're so good at doing mm. uh, Revolutionary Wars and American War stories from mm. the past. It's just it's exciting how much research goes into Jerry Robbins' work. Yes, sport. yes, it's absolutely just, brilliant. Yeah. They, they do so well. Uh, sort of a sad, kind of a sad moment. I don't know if you've heard the news. Fred Greenhall from... Radio Drama Revival has set down the mic and it is being picked up by another. So Radio Drama Re Revival has a brand new host. Did you know oh, that? Wow. So, nice. yeah, and it's David Renstrom from, uh, I believe, uh, Art Fair City. Ah, he's he's okay. done stuff with them and now he's the new host for RDR. Right. So uh, I believe Fred has moved on to uh, other things. He's been doing all kinds of work, I know, in audio drama. I'm sure he's not finished with the medium yet, <laughs> but it's probably because he's so busy that uh, he's he's doing that. So mm. he's moved on. Mm -hmm. So best of luck to Fred. Absolutely. Remember, you don't put down the mic, the mic puts down... You. No. That's... <laughs> that's it's crazy. late here, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. The Zoomer almost put <laughs> Tonight's feature is a new series from Steam Boys Radio Show, beginning with episode one, Meeting the Team by James Lewing.
court martial will come to order. Captain Williams, please stand. For failure in your duties as a commander, for blatant disobeying of direct orders from high command, for complete and unquestioning compromise of your mission, and for the traitorous act of firing with savage intent upon His Majesty's Navy, thereby allowing the enemy's escape, this court finds you guilty. The resulting loss of life, as well as a catastrophic damage to surrounding government vessels spanning your squadron, is outrageous, and your punishment is to be severe. Your rank and title are stripped. You are hereby discharged from your company and from this military without honor. Your ship, the Mockingbird, is to be decommissioned and scuttled. You are sentenced to twenty years solitary confinement in the state capital's penitentiary for treason and as an enemy combatant. Have you anything to say for yourself? Your Honor, under my sworn oath of this military and of this government, I did what was right in the eyes of the gods, morality, <laughs> and of the remaining few decent and good men and women of this nation. My actions may have cost the lives of the brave men and women of this navy, but that cost is nothing in comparison to what this new high command will incur in days to come. Captain Williams! The immorality... The immorality and the corruption displayed from the high command on the recent battlefield are tragic and shocking. My men made the ultimate sacrifice Captain Williams. for their beloved country. They did their duty Captain Williams. in the name of their king and for the people of this so-called nation. They put themselves in harm's way Captain. in spite of being betrayed in the utmost manner from a government they so very willingly placed their faith in, unfounded as it was, for the sake of their true patriotic beliefs and for the sake of what they knew to be good and brave and right. Captain Williams, that is enough. You and the men serving you, be they dead or yet still alive, are traitors. It is clear to this court that you are utterly remorseless for your actions on the recent battlefield. It is also clear that you remain so despite the deaths that are indeed upon your hands. If the remains of your crew have anyone to blame for their betrayal, let them place the blame upon yourself. It is this court's opinion that for the committing of said criminal actions, you should suffer the highest penalty of being clapped in irons, hauled through the streets of this city, set to beating by its citizens, dragged on your knees to the oaken gallows, and hanged by the neck until dead. <laughs> However, as your father, our great and esteemed admiral of His Majesty's Royal Naval Fleet, still by some miraculous shred of compassion and pity, holds you in the slightest of his favor, has granted you a reprieve from said consequences with his influence. You truly do have friends and high places. Be you ever grateful that your family's reach has never exceeded its grasp and that it is so widespread your family can still save one of its own, despite her having fallen so very far. Let the Battle of Vacancity be recanted from the history books as a day of great infamy and ruin. You are hereby returned to your incarceration for seven days' time before you are remanded into the state's custody and transported to the Iron Tower where you will live out the next two decades of your life. Let the record show that Captain Joanna Williams, who has brought shame and disgrace upon her family's namesake, shame upon her title, 
and shame upon her country has received in full this court's mercy. This court is adjourned. This court is a disgrace. There is no one here worthy of their station. Constable, take her away. You sentence me to a life of imprisonment with no call of action against the real crimes this nation has overseen and allowed? You are no honorable justice. This is no high council. Constable, put chains on that woman and take her away now, I said. This land is mine is no longer mine. I am no longer a part of its lies. Father, father, do you see this? Do you see any of this? Joanna. Uncle. Look where you have gotten yourself. Twenty years, Joanna. Uncle, I did what was right. I... You did nothing of the sort. High Command wanted me to put to death innocent lives. Innocents? Bah! Expatriates, outlaws, betrayers, the lot of them. <laughs> you call them innocents? They were unarmed women and children, not combatants. I was to fire upon them? As your duty stated above all else, death to all traitors. Uncle! Is it not so written? Women and children running for their lives. So they were dealt a series of unfortunate events. They chose their actions and brought it down upon themselves. Dealt a series of unfortunate events? Have you honestly convinced yourself of that? There's no excuse for their act of treason, or yours. Treason? Treason, uncle? You call treason fleeing towards a people who would care for them and give them the means to restore their misery-torn lives? They turned towards our enemy. After what those women suffered at the hands of High Council members for practicing their freedom of speech, you can look me in the face and speak of their treason? Rousing insurrection amongst the citizens is not free speech. Insurrection. Gods. Is that what you call it? You and your brute just take whatever passages you want from the Charter and redefine them at will as you see fit. If we don't like you, you are targeted with extreme prejudice. Be careful of what you continue to say to me. Why? Is their fate some day to be my own, then? You haven't any idea. My sentencing is already well known. And the people can vanish. Records can be rewritten. Who are you? Love thy country and see its work done for freedom's sake. Don't you dare twist those words. Those criminals had fallen in with the enemy. They were not criminals. They were victims of the state who had me run them down like dogs. They were dogs. They play revolutionary and bite the hand that feeds them? So rape them as punishment and cover it all by slandering them as turncoats? Oh, how do you even believe that happened to them at all? Because I saw the bodies. It was all clearly evident. The ones still alive told me before they stopped drawing breath. Your word against ours and the deadly actions you already so openly displayed. Who will believe you? This country will survive anything. <laughs> Revolutionaries. That cannot be their crime. We made it so. Military action is justified. The people will not just accept things blindly. Won't they? The people see traitors. The people see their government deal out accordingly. Our hands are kept clean. Not mine! Precisely. You did your work well, niece. Always the champion for the underdog. You didn't kill all of them. I know. And there it is. The proof. You opened my eyes to what all of you really are. Monsters. You are incredibly naive, Joanna. Do you really think all will be well for those women? We are winning this war. The East is losing and morale needs lifting in troubled times. Or didn't you know? They will be heard. No, they won't. Taking them in is nothing more than a pull for increased popularity. Those women will be paraded through the streets as the necessary showpieces for a flood of newfound patriotism. Escaped refugees from the tyrannies of the evil North Atlantic. And you delivered that. They will be thrown away and forgotten after their use expires. You've done nothing but extend their misery and given second wind to our foe. Maybe it is our foe that I should have been fighting for in the first place. 
My, my. The filth and treachery simply spill from your lips, don't they? Like bile. The way you defend them. Like you were a part of it all. Who went first, uncle? I wasn't there. I don't believe you. How is it you think great nations are made, hmm? Moral action or equality for all? Strength, Joanna. The will to do what is necessary. The necessity of progress. There's no room for the compassionate or the kind-hearted when something like a country is forged. No room for weakness so it is stamped out. No room for the ungrateful, like your friends you shot down your own compatriots for, so they are stamped out. No room for traitors, like yourself, so they are stamped out. What else do you believe is the cost for your protections and freedoms? The power of choice of the people by right. Not despicable crimes committed by beasts upon the ungrateful and their immediate silencing by any means. Ha! <laughs> by right? It is only the appearance of rights that the people have, and we, the founders of the High Council, gave that to them. I cannot believe you can use this now to talk of building a country. Do you think over there is any different than here? Any better? They are the same, Joanna, the very same. What the masses experience here, the masses have and will experience over there. Count on that. You are wrong. No, Joanna, I am not. I will not be silent about this. It doesn't matter. We've taken care of everything. You'll only look the rambling fool. It's best you are here. Out of your way, eh? What are you and yours up to, uncle? Changes are coming. You will see. By the power of Rochester or of the High Council? Of what are you trying to convince the king? He hasn't even a hint of the real idea you're about to sell him, does he? We all know the true power doesn't lie with him. Ah, I see. Not with the democratic rulings of calculating men more ambitious than pure. The monarchy has been dying a long time now. We wish for a fresh start without the figurehead. You are seriously mad. I see betrayal runs deeper in my family than I thought. It doesn't stop with me, does it? It's only betrayal if you do not win. They knew something, didn't they? Hmm? The victims. They knew something about your plans. It's why they so suddenly appeared causing a stir, and why they so suddenly disappeared. The High Council did away with them, but not before ripping them apart first. You may believe that. It's of no consequence. You are the treasonous ones. One day the King will find out. I will tell you this one thing before I leave now, and you never hear my voice again. Sheep need shepherds to content them. Allow them their blissful ignorance, even their apathy. Even if those sheep are knowingly fed lies, even if lies are all that is left because the truth is far more disparaging than they could ever possibly stomach, what other alternative could they possibly cling to other than chaos? The one thing they know leads back to darkness. We are the light that brings them hope, Joanna. We are the light, and we are the ones they have faith in for guidance. I'll have faith that one day I will see you strung up, swinging from the tallest oak. May your father never turn his proud face to see what became of his daughter. His daughter? What of his brother? How do you know he doesn't already agree with us? You've heard his many complaints about the monarchy before. He isn't happy. I will never believe he could do this. Don't think for a moment he's on your side, Joanna. He's a soldier, first and foremost. I know what to expect from him. The proud pup of the king, always obedient to his masters, whoever they may be. You figured his loyalty wrong. Have I? How terrible for you that it has taken all of this to make you aware of the world you live in. The world is all that we make it to be, uncle. What truth are you giving me now? Too little too late to learn that lesson now, dear niece. Dealt a series of unfortunate events? Is this to be the first of my very own? Uncle! Uncle! He will know! Do you hear me? They will all know who you are! It's only a matter of time before your carelessness gets the better of you! 
Count on that. Gods. My gods. Not exactly the loving family support you would have hoped to have had at a moment like this. Jackson! <sighs> Unbelievable. Truly so? It is me, as you know. Truly so. Yes, it is. Well, this is a spot of bother. How long were you there? A while. Heard it all, then. I did. Hmm. Yes. The old man's bluffing about your father. I can't be certain. Not now. So, what now? You know what now. You look tired. I am tired. They have me breaking stone. Just like last time. <laughs> Never be too good at something. They'll always want you to do more of it. Yes. All the live long day, huh? Or didn't you already know? I've seen my share of the inside. Are they feeding you in here? You don't want to know that answer. What's in the bucket over there? Food. Well, you were right. Joanna, you knew it was going to be this way. I must have you telling me this. I did not, however, think that my uncle had gone insane. Power clutches all who accord it. In this case, the entire cabinet under the king. There could be those who disagree in secret. Hmm. Where did you think you'd even go? My only interest is leaving. The High Council thought they could use me for a broom to clear their abuses. They were very much mistaken. Right degenerate scum. Certainly that is true, but do you not think it matters just a little what we do? We all climb aboard and set sail to God's nowhere? I am not making you. I'm asking you. You running is never what I thought I would see from you. Stay by my side and you will quite definitely see more. Why this way? I can think of several options that do not include open theft of a government vessel and a highly publicized escape. We can lie low and make a case against the High Council instead of this rash alternative. Don't let your actions for those women be in vain by running. My actions are already in vain and my life is through along with my cause. Do you not know that? The Chief Justice made an example of me, ensuring no person of worth would ever dare look upon me to lend their weight. That old grasser Billings be named Charles and I outlaws alongside you. Bull's got enough skeletons in his closet to condemn himself to the noose a dozen times over. I'll never find out how you know so much, will I? There is wisdom in staying unseen. I will not hide myself away in the shadows to sulk and connive. No, you'll just steal a ship and fly off. They lied to me! You're only going to look more guilty. I know that. This is my option. Retreat now to assess later. All right. I can damn well leave this poisoned country with my ship and make a life elsewhere for myself and for those still left to me. Oh. So is it for us as well? Yes. What did you think? That I was only considering my own safety? Your ship. Yes. Mine. Pride never suits you, Captain. Will you come with me or no? You know you always have our solidarity, despite the dangers we face. But if you do this, then you're just another fugitive. Your name lost. They will kill you. I'm a traitor meant to die a traitor's death. Oh, but lucky to be given mercy from the love of my father. Set to live locked far from everything. My name means nothing. From the moment of that terrible fighting to the moment I was thrown into Blight's Peak. Yes, I knew very well what was to befall me. You tell me, how was I to do anything else that day? How could I have kept calling myself good had I not acted? Would you have done anything different? No. I commit myself to this cause and observe all of its practices then. And it's your family who pays the price of your shame after you fled. Collins, and my family... Hmm? What? My family will never pay any price. You see what has become of me. I am the pain they have cut away. I see very clearly now as the day I saw you defend those women and children. Who have I been fighting for? You're set to this then. To the end. Look to my eyes, Jack. Am I flinching? Unless you've planned something grand, I need to sleep. Dawn isn't far off and... 
I still have what's left in the bucket. You don't look hungry enough for that. We're leaving. You have a key? How? Nothing too grand. Listen. There's at least 20 guards in this pit. Mm hmm. Gods. Open up then. Well, this is a first for me being on this side of a cell. Twist to the left then. Any of them dead, Jack? No, they're dreaming deep. They'll be out good and long enough to grace us time to get the hell away from this place. Do you think me so ruthless? You've never really opened up enough for me to know that now, have you? You're better off. Why bring you back to the peak again? A final humiliation before I'm sent away for good, I suppose. Hmm. So, the Mockingbird? She's locked up and thrown away. We can get to her. What of our navigator? On his farm. That's where we'll head next, then. Let's go. So, we're on, I see. Yes. Well, you wouldn't both be here if we weren't. Is everything set and ready to go? Yeah, pretty much. Bags are packed and I'm ready to fly. Farm's all sold off to Ken and someone's coming by tomorrow to pick up the animals. The crops will be harvested by neighbors and theirs to sell off at market. It's kind of hard to leave this place, but some of my family's been itchy as hell to get their hands on this little piece of cash heaven anyway, so eh, let them have it and be damned. This means too much to me, Charlie. I really don't know what to say other than... Joanna, like you, my eyes are open. What we did together at Vacancity, my days are numbered. Turncoats are not welcome. You and I both know there's no real options afforded to a fellow traitor like myself. I told you that you were to say that you were piloting under duress. That I threatened your life if you disobeyed my orders. <laughs> Ain't no old aviator like myself able to lie to a superior's face and get away with it. Besides, all the boys die and you and I are the only ones left alive? High Council would never believe I wasn't in on things. They'd see right through that. The boys never received a funeral. Do you think I don't think about that? You think I'd just as soon forget about them than give them their due? I said my words for those lads, even if the king now calls them enemies. Acklewood, Mercer, Danny's, Griffin, Sites and his bolt-turning crew, all the steam boys. They bled and cut their teeth for a cause greater than any mission given to them by this nation. And they weren't allowed one extra minute to see their work that day magnificently done. I know that. I'm sorry, Charles. Charlie. Jack would never say anything against any of our own. Uh, you know, where were you, Jackson? What? Where were you when we flew out that day? I was on my own diplomatic mission. Those women were on their way out of the city to be picked up. The Kansity was eminent and I sped out to defuse the situation that was growing worse by the second. I was trying to help avoid any kind of action against unarmed civilians, not to mention what happened in the skies that day. Hmm. <laughs> that day was doomed. Your efforts seem just as fruitless as our own. May the High Command hang their heads in shame for what they ordered that day. Our crew left their lives up there along with all those others following the commands of hate-blinded officers. Our faith was lost in those winds, blood-soaked. We can always remember them for their sacrifice. We have our faith in ourselves that we all did the right thing. Their names and deeds are remembered in our hearts forever. They're never traitors. Hmm. No. They're not. No, they're not. Yeah, we should go. Everything's prepared and ready, then? Yeah, yeah, well, except for a couple of things. I, I needed to talk to you about those things. What is it? Well, it's my brother. He, uh, well, he's coming with me. He's coming with us. Charles, what? We don't even know your brother. What, we need a farmer on board? He's not a farmer. He's a mechanic, and he's coming with us. Jack's right. We don't even know him. You don't have to know him. I've, I've always looked after him. Growing up together and after Mom and Dad died, I'm, I'm all he's got left. He's special, and uh, he, he can't look after himself. And he's a mechanic. Uh, he can't look after himself, but he can sure look after machines. Damned if I knew where he gets all that skill from. He's... He's kind of a genius. Charles. He's useful, and he can help us out with the boat. It, it keeps him going. He's good, you'll see. Hold on, let me get him out here. Jerry! Jerry! Get on out here, lad! Uh, 
uh, hello and, and greeting to everyone and all that stand alongside my brother. Charlie, I don't know. What do you mean, special? Special needs? We can't have that kind of person on our ship. He's in a wheelchair, for God's sake. That wheelchair is motorized. Custom job he built himself after his spine gave out on him. How on earth would he manage? It took 20 hands to keep everything going down at the engines. He's just one. That thing he built moves him faster than any skinny runner or engine boy I ever saw in a wooden bird. You got your 20 hands with that one kid right there. We could always give him a test run. Agreed. Jerry, show him what your chair can do. Gladly. As you can see, this chair is something of a miracle to me. As many years ago, I lost the use of my legs. I drew up the designs myself and set to work upon it in my brother's workshop in the barn behind me. The workshop didn't have exactly everything I needed, so I added on to it. I didn't build a barn, though. My family built that. It's been a good home, and I'm not a kid, Charles. I'm five years older than you. Yeah, you know what I meant, lad. Uh, my chair gives me excellent range of motion. This lever here throttles my speed up and down, and this one here, directly in front of me, controls my direction. Compared to other models and similar seating apparatus, mine is vastly superior, if you would allow me a moment. Now, By all means. Well, thank you. It looks like you've produced a miniaturized and stripped-down version of the engines powering regular-sized airships. Yes, that's it. That is correct, and thank you so much for noticing. It is exactly what I've done in this situation. My brother, being in the Navy, flew many airships, and because I was related to a serviceman, I was allowed from time to time to come aboard several models. I was witness to many engines, and I put the design to memory. I have an excellent memory, photographic if you must know. The S-400 models were wonderful to reimagine, and several working miniatures I built with all their wonderful belts and chain links. But it was the brand new sparkling S-1000 series uh, that powers the Zeppelins of today that I base my chair engine upon. Where's your water supply and power source? Well, directly attached behind me are the water cisterns that are both connected to a boiler capsule on the undercarriage. The one liter capsule is filled with a special chemical liquid that is kept supercharged with direct current being generated by the mini turbines connected to my very wheels. This charge exponentially speeds up the liquid's molecules, which creates a chemical reaction to bring the liquid to a white hot state. That heat evaporates the water in the cisterns, giving me the steam power I need to travel at various speeds. Uh, these wheels are wonderful, as they have the ability to traverse all sorts of terrain. And do you see my wheel design? It's like a locomotive's wheels. <laughs> yeah, he likes choo-choos. What's these valves here in these gauges? Oh, now that is something. I, I added that it's completely one for the books. <laughs> it's what I call my super-duper power thruster. What I do is I turn these two nozzles, and right here, the steam begins to collect en masse with their cisterns, much more than what is needed for regular speeds. And when I've reached the correct pressure, as indicated by these gauges, I simply throw this large lever here by my right side, and away I go. <laughs> oh, let me show you. No! no! Oh, well, all right. It's clearly a wonder of science. I see you went with a more antique look for the actual seat and frame. Well, er, yes, I, I needed something that had some semblance of style. Plus, I like to lie back and relax, and the high back allows that. Sue me. Clearly an amazing device, and man Yeah, I told you it'd be a good addition. Let no man get in his way down there with the engines, and he'll keep you running strong and true, Captain. That's for sure. What do you think? I like him. What was that other thing, Charlie? What? The other thing. There were two things you needed to talk to me about. Oh, well, yeah, that, that would be the sparrow. I'm bringing that with me, too. Your crop duster? Does it even work, Charles? It works, and it'll do a damn fine job for itself. All right, all right. I won't say no to your little fly toy. <laughs> but, but toy? A work of art, that little metal flyer. <laughs> oh, what are your names? I am Captain Joanna Williams, and this is Lieutenant Jack Collins of the HMS Mockingbird, expatriates of His Majesty the King, and of the nation of North Atlantic. Please make your acquaintance. Jerry Field Maximilian Danger Caulfield. Danger is my second middle name. <laughs> he sort of fancies himself a, a superhero. Jerry Field Caulfield. Of course. You can just call me Jerry. Speaking of toys, do we know where the uh, Mockingbird lies? North Atlantic military scrap. Where fine ships of his majesty go to die. Decommissioned after Vacancity is a traitor itself. Indeed. No one speaks the Mockingbird's name. No one but us. Enemies of the state unite, be they man or machine. Amusing. I can be man and machine. Are we going flying? 
Are you afraid of heights, Jerry? Well, um, I, well, that is to say, I don't, yeah. well, I'm not accustomed to actually going up and, uh, so yes. I'm not afraid of heights, but flying, I'm afraid, is another matter. Did you not say that you've been on board boats before? Yes, but they were all grounded. Please have patience. I must get used to the actual idea. I hope you can get used to the idea soon. Well, shall we? Let's. We go. Let's wake up a dead bird. Thank you for listening to Steam Boys Episode 1, Meeting the Team, a Jazz Hound production. Written and produced by Jason Lewing. Cast of characters include Brooke Martin as Joanna Williams, Michael Fermenko as Jackson Collins, Phil Baker as Charles, Bob Lamar as Jerry, Andrew Metzger as Joanna's Uncle August, and James Poole as the Chief Justice. Original music by Mark Rossmore at EscapeTheClouds.com. Special thanks to Chris Ford and Kelly Ryan at Pensacola State College's Ashmore Auditorium, and to you, our listeners. Find us on Facebook at Steam Boys Radio Show and on our Facebook community page at HMSMockingbird.com. Follow us on Twitter at Steam Boys Show. Stay tuned for Episode 2. And that's our show this week. Please join us next week for more great audio drama. In the meantime, drop us a line at sonicsocietygmail.com to let us know or connect with us through the Facebook page at Audio Drama Radio Drama Lovers and Sonic Society or on Twitter at Sonic Society or at Jack Jamie Ward or at Astro Tour 2010. I think it's actually Jack J. Ward. Is it Jack J. Ward? Yeah, I think we we sent people the wrong number there. So, yeah, Jack Ooh. J. Ward is my Twitter Jack J. account. Ward. Just like jackjward.com is my URL, my actual right. my writing page where I keep up with stuff like that. I, but, I do apologize then. I thought it was. It's just yeah. Jack Jamie Ward is my email. Oops, I shouldn't have told him that. <laughs> <laughs> I was sending him my email instead of Sonic no. Society. <laughs> We are looking forward to next week. Again, we're getting so close to Nazrim. Please mm-hmm. get your goals in ASAP. And we look forward to a whole new year of radio drama. Thanks Absolutely. so much for me, Jack Ward. And for me, David Elt, good night. Good night. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. And from me, David Alt. Good night. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, sorry. Um,